Joel Klatt, the voice of college football at Fox now, is joining us on the show. Our, one of our favorite sessions. I do consider it a bit of a football therapy session. Yeah, well, I'm glad that you do. So, you know, you can, you can pay. I take Venmo or <laughs> cash if you want. I saw it the other way. But oh, nonetheless, I, I see. I, I have, see where you're going. Three, How are you doing this week, man? I am, first of all, going to set record. Going to be a lot of people watching you. So, you know what I mean? This week, you got to do prep. <laughs> Colorado okay. USC is a biggie. I will say this. I will say this. I think Colorado, this is my feeling. This is a proud guy and a proud group of young men. I think Colorado was humiliated. Yeah. I think they're going to – now, I don't know if they can win. I don't know how much that defense can stop. But my guess is they'll move the ball on USC. Am I wrong? I don't think that you're wrong. Now, now the, the, just the, the matchup side of this is that USC, their strength defensively is, is putting pressure on the quarterback. It is. And, and they do it as well as anybody, by the way. And – And it's not just because of aggressive play calling. In fact, if you look at their pressure rate when they don't blitz, highest in the country. USC. USC. Wow. When they don't blitz, highest in the country, 48%. So their down linemen are getting the job done. Bear Alexander. Bear Alexander and the pressure that, you know, like that, that has worked. Those transfer acquisitions up front, that has worked. And that's right where Colorado is very weak. The offensive line is not a strength, obviously. Shador has been sacked more times than anybody in the country. 22. He was under an immense amount of pressure last week but against now, Oregon. Now, now Oregon's got a, a defensive coach and they have eight years of stacking four and five guys in recruiting. Yeah, that's true. I mean that, so that was not a fair fight. I listen, I, I don't disagree with you where USC is weak defensively is their inability to tackle in space out of the secondary. Bad. And we saw that pop up against Arizona state <laughs> yeah. last weekend, yes. right? A 14 missed tackles is not going to get, wow. get the job done. And, and more so than that is missed tackles produce not just like explosive plays. They produce first downs and touchdowns. Keep it away from Caleb. That's exactly right. And so in order to get off the field, they're going to have to tackle better because Colorado, I assure you, I assure you, after watching Shadur take the beating he did against Oregon, that ball is going to be out right. quickly to all of the playmakers on the outside and they're going to force USC to try to tackle in space. That would be the one area where you're like, okay, if Colorado is going to keep this close, if they're going to make this a game, that's going to be the area where they have to do it. Because on the flip side, I don't know if you can stop USC. This, this is one of the two best offenses in college football. Caleb's playing at a higher level this year than he did a year ago. Their run game is better than it was and, a year ago. And they're, I, they have a home run hitter in Lloyd at running back. Marsh, they, Marshawn Lloyd is, is a really good player. Yeah, they, they Zachariah have, Branch, when insane. they get him, oh my gosh. He's the best true freshman. And he's, he is arguably, after Caleb, their best offensive player. Uh, I think that with the ball in his hands in space as a returner or in the slot, he's the most dangerous player in college football with the ball in his hands right now no, as I, a true freshman. He's currently he, it's, his high school video at Bishop Gorman was oh, insane. Yeah, it's, it's, it was Reggie Bush. It's silly. I tell you the, the, the thing about Caleb that I marvel at Caleb, his superpower is what he does outside of the pocket. Yeah. The big plays, he, his ability to, throw the ball with velocity and accuracy off platform running around remarkable remarkable he does it better than anybody in college that i've ever seen even when he's running around he sees his head left right left right he sees the whole field if you normally prepare for a guy that's like his superpower is outside of the pocket defensive coordinators will be like we gotta keep him inside of the pocket we've got to keep him him hemmed in But you can't do that with Caleb because here's the other part. He's grown and developed and he controls the game from the pocket as well as anybody in the sport right now. Yeah. And so like this guy's ceiling, which I already thought was high is even higher. He's playing at that type of a level. They're the number one scoring offense in the country. They've upgraded the O-line. They've upgraded the offensive line. And and that's a scary proposition. If Colorado wants to stay close or win this game, they're going to have to score 45 points to do it. I want to say that I said this, you know, Dan Lenning came out, the coach for Oregon had a pregame speech and people got fired up. I'm like, folks, if you heard every pregame speech, Oh yeah. (laughs) I mean, give me a break. I don't think Colorado's overhyped because networks hype everything and only few things get ratings. So yep. it's appropriately hyped. People used to say this to me all the time. This is Tiger, a... Tiger Woods is overhyped. I'm like, no. No, no, no. No, he's appropriately hyped. That's correct. So I watch Colorado. The other thing I don't like is that uh, it's very divisive. No, college football 
is a sport of tradition. They hate anything new. True. Conference realignment, NIL, transfer portal. Harbaugh took more heat than anybody because he was different in recruiting. And, and remember, Harbaugh did those satellite camps where he would go and like, you can't have a camp in the South. You know, it's like, <laughs> why? well, why not? They, they, so hated you're right. It. You're right on that. Now, a couple of things on this. Like, first and foremost, on Dan Lanning, this actually, the way that he approached last week's game with Colorado made me more of a believer in Oregon. I, same thing. And, and the reason is, is because Dan Lanning knows exactly what it takes. He saw Georgia. He helped build Georgia. That's where he came from. Yeah. He knows the, see, the, the, the size, the speed, the quality of play you got to have at quarterback. His recruiting's been amazing. His recruiting's been outstanding. He doesn't do that unless he knows. He knows it's like, I got a team that can play on the level. I got a team that can play at the top end of college football, and we're about to house these guys. Yeah. And so he does that, and that's his job. I don't begrudge him that. No. Now, like, do I find it a, a smidge hypocritical to talk about, <laughs> yes. you know, clicks while you've inviting a camera in? Sure, but that's, that's okay because that's what this sport is about. You're yes. trying to build up your program and acquire talent. Now, the, the other side of this is the Colorado side, okay? And, and, and you touched on this, this interest and how everyone is against them or whatever. I do believe that there are people in the sport, coaches and, and some crusty old pundits, that don't like the attention that they're getting. But what they don't realize is that they have not just grabbed the attention of the same fans that watch college no, football. New people. This is the Tiger Woods effect yes. to golf. They have created a, a whole new sector of people watching college football to, to for Colorado and Oregon to get 10 million people watching when the game is over effectively at the 10 minute mark of the first quarter is remarkable. That's why we cover it as a media. That's why media companies are constantly talking about Deion Sanders is because everybody else is also talking about Deion Sanders. It's appropriately hyped for the interest that is out there throughout our country. Okay, so I want to shift to Ohio State. Lou Holt said they're a good team, not great. Ryan Day uh, bristled at it. <laughs> I got to tell you something. I think Penn State would smoke them. I think Penn smoke State. Smoke Ohio State? I think the two teams in this country that well, are good, wildly is, underrated are Washington and Penn State, uh, and they got they, that kid, that Penn State quarterback. He's very good. He's going to be a number one pick in two years. I do believe that as well. Wow. I, I believe you heard me say that first. So Did that's, it? yeah, that's okay, though. I, you can I, take it. It was a couple of weeks ago, which I understand in your right elevated age, me, you forget who said one. things, which is fine. It's a good take. So take it, own it, <laughs> own it. Now, I don't disagree with you. They're not a great team. Wait, Ohio State? They're coming, I don't they're know at, about that. Oh, Notre Dame outplayed them for most of the game. It'd help if they had 11 uh, guys on the field, but nonetheless, I thought Notre Dame. Can we just appreciate that? Like, that was two very good teams. I feel good about both teams moving forward, by I the way. I feel good. As Lou Holt said, I don't feel great. Right, think, first of all, Ryan's, Ryan's emotion after the game in regards to what Lou Holt said <laughs> had nothing to really do with like Lou it. Holtz. I know. And I do too, by the way. Wait, by the way, pick what you want. Coach says, hey, you know, you know nucle he gives you a nuclear loosh in like one game at a time, and you're yeah. like, no, coaches never say anything. Then Ryan Day is like, Ohio against the world, and you're like, he's too <laughs> emotional. <laughs> Which one do you want? I like, listen, these coaches are to some degree salesmen. That's right. And, and by the way, his program. he was speaking to his base. That was, that was essentially a post-game interview that was a political rally. Yeah. For his base. I would love it. If a you're base. an Ohio State fan or a player or a staff member, you loved it. And rightly so. And that's who he was speaking to. If you didn't love it, you're probably a Michigan fan, which is fine. Just call a spade a spade. Yeah. So Ryan did what he intended to do, and it landed for the people that it was intended to land for. And that's what I think people outside of that base don't really understand. Now, that's that. I actually think Ohio State is very good, and their quarterback very proved good. that he can take them even even higher let than me, that. Let me, let you me. also brought up Washington. You brought up a lot. Okay, I mean, let, let's say, I, I'm just you want to go back and listen well, to Ohio you, State? You tend to be ice cream for breakfast, guy. The, I'm over here eating wheat thins for dinner. It's a much different <laughs> world I live wait, in. I have wait, blue, wait. Is wheat thins for dinner supposed hey, to be responsible? No, it's a, my blue-collar work ethos. I'm not out here jetting but around. If, so... You just throw out very good. I'll tell you who's very good in this country. There's no great this year. There's a lot. There's some very this good. This is why I said very good. Okay, Georgia's there is no very great. good. Michigan's very good. I mean, do you Washington know that? Yeah, I do. Do you? Who did they play? Who have they played? 
Have they played outside of their home stadium? Texas is very good. Okay. Do we uh, do okay. we know that? Florida State is very good. Okay. Timeout. Timeout. Clemson. Time out. Big game. By the way, I, I'm doing what Marcus Freeman should have done. He should have had a, <laughs> another time. I'm going to I'm going to call it timeout. Timeout. Number one, Ohio State's O line is average so far. They're not in short yardage there, but they protected when they needed it most. They can protect with anybody in the country, and they ran the ball decently. I get it. The short yardage issue is an issue, and they're going to have to figure that out. By the way, guess who also had the short yardage issue? Notre Dame, because they failed on a couple of fourth downs as well. Now, you, you bring up a couple of other teams, and I don't disagree with you. I think it's obvious that Texas is an above-the-line team that can compete for a national championship. I'm a big believer in Texas. But let's not all of a sudden hand them trophies when they also were in a 10-10 tie at home against Wyoming. Like, like relax. Didn't you bring up Florida State? And that's where we got to call a timeout. Because while Florida State might have a great resume right now, they, they're not a lot of substance there. They got outgained by 100 yards against Boston College. 100 yards. They got outgained by 100 yards against Clemson. There are 27 undefeated teams right now in America. 27. In terms of yard differential on the season, of those 27, they're dead last. 27th. If you actually watch the game against Clemson, you'll see that it actually played out more like an underdog sneaking out a win and an upset win on the road. You know how I know that? They got out gained by 100 yards. They needed a defensive touchdown to score, plus yeah. a two turnover day, and they needed Clemson to miss a 29-yard field goal. Mm -hmm. So this whole Florida State is very good, and I don't know if Ohio State is. Come on. Like, what are we doing? Well, again, I, 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 I know that you don't like defensive touchdowns, but that goes back to the wheat thins and the blue collar ethos that <laughs> I represent thins for dinner. Okay. Defensive touchdowns Let, and wheat thins for dinner. Okay. I want to say this though. I want to pivot back West. I know I'm a West coast Homer and I know I grew up a Husky fan. So I always push back on that. I love Washington. First of all. And I, I told a buddy of this. I said, I don't think USC can stop Washington. I think, no, I, don't, I agree with that. I think Washington can make a stop or two. This offense is a pro offense, yeah. two NFL receivers, a first-round quarterback, two pro tackles, an edge rusher that's a first- or second-rounder. This is the most undervalued team in the country. This, no question. This coach and this quarterback. No question. People, it looks like Miami Dolphins, are wide open. I will tell you this. The, here's the way I've defined it. Washington is the scariest team in the country. Because, because here's the thing. If you're Georgia with a new quarterback or Ohio State with a new quarterback or Michigan with with a methodical offense or or even, you know, like Texas with, you know, the questions around if you can play at the top end, who can actually accurately state with confidence today our offense can score with Washington? Maybe USC. That's it. At this point, and they don't have their and USC doesn't have Washington's receiver. No, they don't. This and wide I don't receiver know if core they have is their line. this wide receiver core insane is as good or better than anybody. And I understand what what Ohio State is playing with. Two I know what Ohio rounders. State is playing with. And McMillan didn't even play last week, and Adunze went off. And here's the other part: Washington people have said like, well, their defense is not very good. Look at you know Cal scored this or that. No, 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 no. If you actually look at the point in which Michael Penix Jr. exited the games, yeah. I mean, it's, it's 40, 41, nothing, 42, 12, 52, yep. 12. They, they are beating people by a margin right now. That is substantial. And you brought up the coach and I'm glad you did. His name's Kalen DeBoer yeah, and Fres Kalen, Indiana, Fresno state, Washington. And before that he was a head coach at Sioux falls. So then he's a head coach at Sioux Falls, goes and he's a coordinator for Indiana. That's where he meets Michael Penix Jr. for the first time. They yeah. form a relationship there. He goes to Fresno State. Then he gets Penix to transfer away from Indiana and land with him at Washington. So they've got a relationship. And that relationship was one of the things that allowed Penix to have so much success in the COVID year at Indiana when Indiana had a pretty remarkable season that year. Yeah. I believe they were 6-2. and two. Now, Kalen DeBoer has coached over a hundred games as a head coach. Not many people know that because they're just like, oh yeah, he, you know, Fresno and this yeah. and that. He coached at Sioux Falls. Do you know his record as a head coach? I do. I follow Sioux Falls football. It 94 was, and 11. I think it's 94 and 12. Double check. I believe it's 11. Okay. I'm up on Sioux Falls football. I, I wish I love, by the, the way. The fighting kitchen sinks. But, but think Fantastic. about that. Like, here, so here's a guy that like has a pedigree. You know, like Marcus Freeman's going to get drug under the bus this week about the, the end of game at Notre Dame. Yeah. Guess what he never had? Years at Sioux Falls to learn how to be well, a head that's coach. A good point. Right? And so 
Kalen DeBoer is a good coach. This defense is a little better than people think. The offensive line's excellent. Washington's the scariest team in the country. Okay, let's go to your top 10. It's mostly right. I think you have Penn State undervalued. I okay. think Penn State is, I think they're the best team in the Big Ten. I did see them against Michigan. Illinois. They weren't great against Illinois. They couldn't handle Jerzon Newton, first-round defensive tackle. Was that game at Illinois? It, it was. A, yeah. It was. So you went to Illinois. It's easy to fall asleep there. Okay, that was a cheap shot. <laughs> that was a, okay. Why you got to do that to Illinois? All I right. Loved, I, I loved think, Illinois. Okay, Georgia won. I mean, Penn State is sixth. Where do you want me to put them? Uh, you want me to put them over Ohio State. You feel like I'm overrating ab, Ohio ab, State. Penn State is absolutely better than Ohio State today. Well, it's a good thing that we're going to be able to find that out, and I can't wait to call that what, game. What Gusson, that on? I believe that's on Fox, F-O-X. Maybe you've Big noticed. Saturday. We have yeah. most of the good games. That's right. Um, I'll say this. I think you have, and I'm not trying to be a homer here. Because I don't like that. But I think I, Oregon is underrated I, I, so, on that So list. do I. I think Oregon. Isn't this crazy? The Pac-12 had five years. I'm a Pac-12 guy. I gave up. This is the, easily the best they've ever been. No doubt. I mean, Oregon. No doubt. I want and this Oregon between depth of players. Dude, they were just cycling guys in. It's like they got four-star guys everywhere. That's right. I think Oregon and Penn State are underrated. I think. I probably wouldn't have Washington too. I think Ohio State, you've got them overvalued. Utah cracks me up. It, it is interesting, though, when you put this up, and we should state this. You, you said it in a way. You said, we don't have great. We have very good. Yeah. But because the greatness has maybe receded just a touch and other programs have built themselves up, Maybe. I believe that we have more teams this year in college football that are actually legitimate national championship contenders than oh. ever before in my career. But listen, if, if when Utah can get consistent, healthy play at quarterback with that defense, you think that you'd be shocked if they beat Washington or Oregon? I would not be shocked. And at the same, here, but here's the thing in the same vein, if rising doesn't play this week at Oregon state, Utah will get beat. Oh, because boy. Oregon State is really tough. Oh, no, really good. So Washington that State's league good. is in, it's the best it's ever been. No doubt. It's what's well, the best in the country this year. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.